नमस्कार वॉम वेलकम टू वर्ल्ड न्यूज एन इंडियन परस्पेक्टिव ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो दिस इज निशित कुमार एंड विथ मीज अदिति लोम्बा ब्रिंगिंग ग्लिम्स ऑफ द मेजर डिवेलपमेंट्स ऑफ द डे फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द ग्लोब ओवर द नेक्स्ट हाफ एन आवर वी शैल ब्रिंग यू द लेटेस्ट फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स इकोनॉमी स्पोर्ट्स एंटरटेनमेंट एंड मॉर द हेडलाइंस Quantum jump in drone industry shows emerging opportunities for employment in India says Prime Minister Narendra Modi at India's biggest drone festival Bharat Drone Mahotsav 2022 in New Delhi Drone technology ensures last mile delivery across the nation says Prime Minister US Secretary of State Antony Blinken says Biden administration is not seeking a cold war with China but wants Beijing to adhere to international rules Ukraine needs to face reality and talk to Russian leader Putin says Ukrainian president Zelensky. Countries should take quick steps to contain the spread of monkeypox and share data about their vaccine stockpiles says World Health Organization European Union working on a common purchasing agreement for vaccines. Gitanjali Shree's novel Tomb of Sand wins the International Booker Prize becomes the first novel translated from Hindi to win the prestigious award. India's documentary film festival MIF 2022 took its start on Sunday and in Asia Cup hockey India to take on Japan in the first Super Four stage match tomorrow at Jakarta in Indonesia. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that the quantum jump in the drone industry shows the possibilities of emerging opportunities for employment in the country. Inaugurating India's biggest drone festival Bharat Drone Mahotsav 2022 at Pragati Maidan in New Delhi on Friday Mr Modi said India has the potential of becoming a global drone hub and this technology will play a crucial role in several sectors ranging from agriculture defense disaster management health and land mapping in the future Drone ke roop mein hamare paas ek aur aisa smart tool aa gaya hai jo bahut jald samanya se samanya bhartiya ke jeevan ka hissa banne ja raha hai abhi jitna istemal ho raha hai drone ka usse kahi jyada istemal hum aane wale dino mein dekhne wale hain highlighting the importance of technology the prime minister said It is ensured last mile delivery and with the help of technology target of antyodaya can be achieved antyodaya means the welfare of the people in the bottom of the pyramid terming drone technology as an effective tool in delivery of services and improving ease of living mr modi said it will take the farming sector to another level and it will ensure the progress of marginalized farmers the prime minister said farmers confidence towards the technology has increased in the last 8 years and now they are adopting technology without any fear आज देश का किसान टेक्नोलॉजी के साथ कहीं ज्यादा कंफर्टेबल है उसे ज्यादा आसानी से अपना रहा है ड्रोन टेक्नोलॉजी हमारे कृषि सेक्टर को दूसरे लेवल पर ले जाने वाली है और आज जब हम आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव मना रहे हैं तो मेरा भी यही सपना है कि भारत में हर हाथ में स्मार्टफोन हो हर खेत में ड्रोन हो और हर घर में समृद्धि हो Prime Minister Modi said drones will play a crucial role in delivery of medicines and vaccines in the far flung areas of the country. With the help of drone Macpim he reviewed the progress of Kedarnath redevelopment project appreciating the use of drone in PM Swamitva scheme the prime minister said 65 lakh property cards have been generated with the help of drones. He said for the first time digital mapping of every property in the villages of the country is being done under this scheme. The prime minister said this government has reduced the restrictions imposed on the drone sector. On the occasion civil aviation minister Jyotiraditya Sindhya said India has become a leader in the technology sector in the last 8 years several union ministers including health and family welfare minister Mansukh Mandavia railways minister Ashwini Vaishnav agriculture minister Narendra Singh Tomar and other dignitaries were present during the mahotsav Minister of State for Commerce and Industry Anupriya Patel launched the Indian Business Portal in New Delhi on Friday it will serve as an international trade hub for the Indian exporters and foreign buyers The portal is a business to business digital marketplace to empower small medium enterprises exporters artisans and farmers to identify new markets for their products and grow their sales globally speaking after launching the portal ms patel said that the portal will act as e-commerce marketplace to help indian exporters get global visibility she said it will address a number of elements which are part of the vision of prime minister narendra modi and a commitment of the government like digitizing exporters supporting msme and encouraging greater exports of the indian products 
The Indian Business Portal has been developed by the Federation of Indian Export Organizations to provide Indian SME exporters, artisans and farmers and foreign buyers a business-to-business -business marketplace on a single digital window. India and United Arab Emirates have signed an MOU to establish a framework to facilitate and enhance bilateral cooperation on climate action. The agreement was signed between Environment, Forest and Climate Change Minister Bupendra Yadav and UAE Climate Envoy and Minister of Industry and Advanced Technology Dr. Sultan Al Jaber in New Delhi. The basic objective of this MOU is to establish a framework to facilitate and enhance bilateral cooperation on climate action and also contributes towards implementing the Paris Agreement. Mr. Yadav also held a bilateral meeting with Dr. Sultan Al Jaber in the meeting to discuss issues relating to climate change, hosting of COP28 and other related matters. National Security Advisor Ajit Dobal has stressed on the need to enhance capability of Afghanistan to counter terrorism and terrorist groups which poses a threat to regional peace and security. He said the foremost priority should be the right to life and a dignified living as well as protection of human rights of all. Mr. Doval said during a meeting with NSAs of Tajikistan, Russia, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Iran, Kyrgyzstan and China in Dushanbe. He said India has historical and civilizational relations with Afghanistan and it has always stood by the people of Afghanistan. He said India has focused on infrastructure, connectivity and humanitarian assistance over the decades. The NSA highlighted the need for representation of all the sections of Afghan society, including women and minorities, so that the collective energies of the largest possible proportion of the Afghan population feel motivated to contribute to nation building. On the sidelines of the meeting, the NSA took the opportunity to meet his counterparts from Iran, Tajikistan, Russia and other partners in the dialogue. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has said that the Biden administration is not seeking a cold war with China but wants Beijing to adhere to the international rules. He also said that Washington sees Beijing as a long-term challenge. Mr. Blinken said U.S. is not looking for conflict or a new cold war. The top U.S. diplomat used his remarks at George Washington University to explain existing policies rather than unveiling any bold new direction towards China. During his 30 minutes address, Blinken reflected on U.S. President Joe Biden's Indo-Pacific Economic Framework announcement and the Quad meeting earlier this week during his first Asia tour. Biden unveiled the discussion on IPEF on May 23rd with a dozen initial partners, including India, which represents 40% of the world GDP. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Friday said Ukraine was not eager to talk to Russian President Vladimir Putin but that it has to face the reality that it will likely be necessary to end the war. He says this during an address to an Indonesian think tank. Zelensky said that there are things to discuss with the Russian leader. He said he is not telling that his people are eager to talk to Russian leader but Ukraine has to face the realities of what they are living through. The Ukrainian leader said that they want their lives back from this meeting. He said they want to reclaim the life of a sovereign country within its own territory. He added that Russia did not appear to be ready yet for serious peace talks. Turkey's Foreign Minister Mevlut Cavusoglu says Sweden and Finland now must take concrete steps to alleviate his country's security concerns to overcome Ankara's objections to the NATO membership bid. He said on Friday that delegations from the two Nordic countries have returned home with Turkey's demand after a visit this week and Ankara's waiting for the answers. The country's membership bids require support from all the NATO countries but Turkey is objective to them. It has cited alleged support for Kurdish militants that Turkey considers terrorist and restrictions on weapon sales to Turkey. Kavusoglu said Turkey understands Finland and Sweden's security concerns but everyone also needs to understand Istanbul's legitimate security concerns. Austrian Chancellor Karl Nehammer said Russian President Vladimir Putin told him on a telephone call on Friday that Moscow would meet its natural gas delivery commitments. He said Russia was ready to discuss the prisoner swap with Ukraine. He made the comments to reports after the two leaders held a 45-minute call. Countries should, should take quick steps to contain the spread of monkeypox and share data about their vaccine stockpiles, a senior World Health Organization official said on Friday. WHO Director for Global Infectious Hazard Preparedness Sylvie Brand told this during a technical briefing for member states at the UN Agency's annual assembly. Monkeypox is a usually mild viral infection that 
is endemic in parts of western central africa so far there are about 300 confirmed or suspected cases in and around 20 countries brian said that the key priority currently is trying to contain the transmission in the non endemic countries she said measures like early detection isolation of cases and contact tracing are needed the who official said member state should also share information about the first generation stockpiles of smallpox vaccines which can also be effective against the monkeypox currently who officials are advising against mass vaccination instead suggesting targeted vaccination where available for close contacts of people infected meanwhile the european union is working on a common purchasing agreement for vaccines and antivirals against monkeypox a broad consensus was reached in principle with member states for the health emergency preparedness and response authority to acquire medical countermeasures on their behalf as soon as possible a european commission spokesperson told reuters International Monetary Fund Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva has said that Sri Lanka's present crisis is due to mismanagement. Speaking in Davos, she said that it is a result of mismanagement and therefore the most important thing to be done is to put the country back on a sound microeconomic footing. According to media reports, Ms. Georgieva further said that the IMF will strongly support Sri Lanka's debt restructuring process. and it will be available once the imf has clarity on what the program will look like and how the debt can be restructured she also expressed gratitude to india for being such a good friend to sri lanka and for advocating support for sri lanka in this very difficult time and in today's hot spot section we bring you a news commentary on india africa ties India's links with the struggle for freedom and justice in South Africa date back to the period during which Mahatma Gandhi started his Satyagraha movement in South Africa over a century ago. India was at the forefront of the international community in its support to the anti-apartheid movement. It was the first country to sever trade relations with the apartheid government in 1946 and subsequently imposed a complete diplomatic, commercial, cultural and sports embargo on South Africa. India worked consistently to put the issue of apartheid on the agenda of the United Nations, non-aligned movement and other multilateral organizations and for the imposition of comprehensive international sanctions against South Africa. The ANC maintained a representative office in New Delhi from the 1960s onwards. African heads of missions in New Delhi and Ministry of External Affairs jointly celebrated Africa Day in New Delhi on the 25th of this month. India's Minister of State for External Affairs, Dr. Rajkumar Ranjan Singh, delivered the keynote address as chief guest on this occasion and highlighted multifaceted relations with African countries. Africa Day is the annual commemoration of the foundation of the Organization of African Unity in 1963 and the attainment of independence. The occasion provides an opportunity to celebrate and appreciate the continent's diverse heritage and acknowledge economic potential of the African continent. Over the years the Ministry of External Affairs has extended support for this annual celebration showing importance of Africa in the Indian foreign policy. India's traditional and historic partnership with Africa have further strengthened through intensifying political engagement including 34 visits at the level of heads of state, heads of government and vice president from India and more than 100 incoming visits by African leaders to India. In addition, every country in Africa has been visited by India's union ministers. India expanded its diplomatic footprints globally by opening of 18 new diplomatic missions in Africa, taking total Indian missions in the continent to 47. Prime Minister Modi's 10 guiding principles of India's engagement with Africa have been serving as an instrument in India's multidimensional relationship with Africa in the changing world. India's concessional loans, grants and capacity building program have played a significant role in Africa's socio-economic development. So far, lines of credit worth 12.26 billion US dollars have been extended to African countries, thus making it the second largest recipient of India's concessional loan. Under these LOCs, 193 projects have been completed and 66 projects are currently under execution and 88 in pre-execution stage in various sectors such as drinking water, agriculture mechanization and irrigation, solar electrification, power plants, transmission lines, cement and sugar plants, textiles, technology parks and railway infrastructure etc. During India Africa Forum Summit in 2015, India offered 50,000 scholarships under the Indian Technical and Economic Cooperation and other scholarship programs out of which more than 32,000 scholarship slots have already been utilized by the African youth. 
Thousands of African students are presently pursuing their higher studies in various Indian universities under self-financing scheme as well. India has been providing support to African countries to address the digital divide through NEA's flagship scheme E Vidya Bharti for Tele Education and E Arogya Bharti for Tele Medicine offering scholarships to 15000 African students under this scheme to pursue online education in undergraduate postgraduate and diploma courses so far 19 African countries have become partners in this initiative and furthermore India has established 7 IT centers in Egypt Ghana Lesotho Morocco Namibia South Africa and Tanzania to promote digital literacy among African youth eight vocational training centers two centers for geoinformatics applications in rural development in Madagascar and Niger upgradation of technology center in Zimbabwe have been contributing Africa in its digital transformation and skill enhancement on the trade and economic front india is the fourth largest partner for africa registering 69.7 billion us dollars of trade during 2018-19 and is the fifth largest investor in africa with cumulative investments at 70.7 billion us dollars india's investments are in sectors like oil and gas mining banking pharma textiles automotive agriculture etc 38 African nations have benefited from the government of India's duty free tariff preference scheme which provides duty free access to 98.2% of India's total tariff lines during the covid pandemic india gifted 150 tons of medical aid to more than 25 african countries to support their response to the pandemic under the government of india's vaccine mitra initiative India has supplied 37.59 million doses or 1.05 million doses under grant 10.2 million doses under commercial and 26.38 under GAVI's Covax initiative to 42 African countries and 325000 doses to UN health workers and UN peacekeepers under humanitarian assistance India has provided food aid worth of 15.8 million US dollars to various African countries to support their fight against hunger and poverty. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. Hindi author Gitanjali Shree's novel Raid Samadhi Tomb of Sand has won the International Booker Prize becoming the first novel translated from Hindi to do so Gitanjali Shree is not only the world's first Hindi winner but also it is for the first time a book originally written in any Indian language has won the Booker Prize Gitanjali Shree said this is a melancholy satisfaction in the award going to Tomb of Sand This is an elegy for the world we inhibit a lasting energy that retains hope in the face of impending doom anything anyone writes is reflective solely and uh, completely only about some one example i think uh, we have replete with examples of this sort of women coming into their own as they grow older we have a report Gitanjali Shree's Tomb of Sand translated from Hindi by Daisy Rockwell has won the prestigious Booker Prize the prize money of 50000 pounds will be shared between the author and the translator equally Shree's book clinched the award where 135 books competed Tomb of Sand is the story of an 80 year old woman who slips into a deep depression when her husband dies then resurfaces to gain a new lease on life the woman travels to Pakistan to confront the unresolved trauma of a teenage experience of partition and reevaluates what it means to be a mother a daughter a woman and a feminist Gitanjali has authored three novels and several short story collections although Tomb of Sand is the first of her books to be published in the UK Rockwell is a painter writer and translator living in Vermont US who has translated a number of works from Hindi and Urdu literature Despite the fact that Britain has a very long relationship with the Indian subcontinent very few books are translated from Indian languages from Hindi Urdu Malayalam and Bengali said officials from Booker and hope that Gitanjali's success will inspire other authors from around the world to enter the competition Ravi Kumar World News All India Radio New Delhi India's foremost documentary film festival MIFT to 
2022 is set to begin on Sunday. The Films Division Complex, which also houses the National Museum of Indian Cinema, is getting ready to host the 17th Mumbai International Film Festival for documentary, short fiction and animation films. The opening ceremony of the week-long biennial Mumbai International Film Festival will take place at the Nehru Centre, Worli, with all the festival screenings will happen in the Films Division Complex in Mumbai. We have a report from our correspondent. MIF 2022 has got an overwhelming response from filmmakers across the world, receiving a whooping 808 film entries from 30 countries. Out of these, 102 films will be screened under the competition category, 35 in international competition and 67 in national competition. 18 films will be screened under MIF Prism category. The best film of the festival will receive the Golden Conch Award along with a cash prize of Rs 10 lakhs. Other awards carry cash awards varying from 5 to 1 lakh along with silver coins, trophy and certificate. Dr. V. Shantaram Lifetime Achievement Award that carries a cash award of Rs 10 lakh Golden Conch and a citation will be presented to a filmmaker of eminence for their seminal contribution in commemoration of Bangladesh. 50 years of independence, the country has been chosen as the country of focus this year. A special package of 11 films from Bangladesh, including critically acclaimed film Hasina, a daughter's tale, will be presented at MIF 2022. Netflix original series Mighty Little Beam. I Love Taj Mahal episode will make its world premiere at MIF 2022. The first animation film co-produced by India and Japan, Ramayana, The Legend of Prince Rama will also have its special screening at MIF. Bhavna Gokhale, World News, All India Radio, Mumbai. The United States on Friday won the latest round of a legal battle to seize a $325 million Russian-owned super yacht in Fiji with the case now appearing headed for the Pacific Nation's top court. The case has highlighted the thorny legal ground the U.S. finds itself on as it tries to seize the sets of Russian oligarchs around the world. Fiji's Court of Appeal on Friday dismissed an appeal by Fizil Hanif, who represents the company that legally owns the super yacht Amadea. Hanif had argued the U.S. had no jurisdiction under Fiji's mutual assistance laws to seize the vessel, at least until a court sorted out who really owned the media. Hanif said he now plans to take the case to Fiji's Supreme Court and will apply for a court order to stop U.S. agents sailing the media from Fiji before the appeal is heard. As part of its ruling, the appeals court ordered that its judgment is not to take effect for seven days, presumably to give time for any appeals to be filed. The U.S. argues that its investigation has found that behind various fronts, the Cayman Islands flagged luxury yacht is really owned by the sanctioned Russian oligarch Suleiman Kerimov, an economist and former Russian politician. In the United States, the National Rifle Association begins its annual convention in Houston on Friday. NRA is the biggest and the most powerful gun lobby group in the U.S. Leaders of the powerful gun rights lobbying group are gearing up for reflect on and deflect any blame for the deadly shooting earlier this week of 19 children and two teachers at an elementary school in Ovalde, Texas. Former President Donald Trump and other leading Republicans are scheduled to address the three-day firearms marketing and advocacy event, which is expected to draw protesters fed up with the gun violence. Some scheduled speakers and performers have backed out, including two Texas lawmakers, American Pie singer Don McLean said it would be disrespectful to go ahead with his act in the aftermath of the country's latest mass shooting. President Joe Biden and Democrats in Congress have renewed calls for stricter gun laws. However, NRA board member Phil Journey said the focus should be on better mental health care and trying to prevent gun violence. He said he wouldn't support banning or limiting access to firearms. China and Russia vetoed a U.S.-led push to impose more United Nations sanctions on North Korea over its renewed ballistic missile launches. According to media reports, the remaining 13 council members voted in favor of the U.S. draft a resolution that proposed banning tobacco and oil exports to North Korea. The vote came after North Korea fired three missiles, including one thought to be its largest intercontinental ballistic missile following U.S. President Joe Biden's trip to Asia. In Asia Cup Hockey, India will take on Japan in their first Super 4 stage match at the GBK Sports Complex Hockey Stadium in Jakarta, Indonesia on Saturday. The match will begin at 5 in the evening, Indian time. 
India qualified for the Super 4 round with a huge 16-0 win over host Indonesia on Thursday. In Super 4s, the four teams will play each other once. The top two teams will then play the final. Japan, Malaysia and South Korea are the other teams to have qualified for the stage. Sri Lanka crushed Bangladesh by 10 wickets on the 5th and the final day of the second test match on Friday being played in Dhaka to claim the two-match series by 1-0. Sri Lankan pacer Asista Fernando demolished the Bangladesh batting order in the second innings by claiming 6 for 51. He finished with an impressive 10 for 144 in the match, playing a key role in the victory of Sri Lanka. Bangladesh's second innings folded up at 169, leaving Sri Lanka with a target of 29 runs to win the match, which it did in just three overs without losing any wicket. Bangladesh had scored a respectable 365 in the first innings with some solid batting from Mushfikar Rahim, Rahim and Liton Das, 141. Sri Lanka replied with an impressive 506 in the first innings, powered by Century's Anglo Matthews, 145 unbeaten, and Dinesh Chandimal, scoring 124, giving Sri Lanka a good lead of 141 runs. And now a report from the business world. The Sensex climbed 632 points to close at 54,885, while the Nifty rose 182 points to finish at 16,352. At the global stock market, Asian stock markets logged gains following overnight robust gains in the U.S. markets. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index surged 2.9% and South Korea's Kospi climbed 1%. Japan's Nikkei 225 gained 0.7% and Singapore's Straits Times ended 0.7% up while China's Shanghai Composite Index added 0.2%. European share markets were up in intraday trade. Crude prices logged losses of around half a percent in intraday trade. Brent crude was trading at $117.15 per barrel. And in the forex market, the rupee today appreciated marginally by one pesi against the U.S. dollar. The rupee closed at 77 rupees and 57 pesi against the U.S. currency. Gaurav Havan Lal for World News, All India Radio. Now let us take a look at the major developments around the world as reported in the foreign press. First, we have a look at the press reports on China. Reuters reports that COVID hit Shanghai, heads for lockdown exit, but China still lost in economic gloom. Many investment banks have cut their growth forecast for China to as low as 3%. Al Jazeera reports China will reportedly seek a wide-ranging security and economic deal with 10 Pacific states during Foreign Minister Wang Yi's trip to the region this week, along with a 20-strong delegation. Now let's have a look at the press reports on Nepal. Nepal News reports that Minister of Culture, Tourism and Civil Aviation Prem Bahadur Ali has requested European Ambassador in Nepal to lift ban on Nepal from EU safety list. Now let's have a look at the press reports on Pakistan. Don Rice that Islamabad police on Thursday booked PTI chairman Imran Khan and other leaders of his party in two separate cases over allegations of arson and vandalism in the capital the previous night. Don also reports that Pakistan Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif said on Thursday that the National Assembly would decide the date for the next general elections. Geo News writes that Pakistan Finance Minister Mirta Ismail on Thursday announced a massive hike in the price of petroleum products. And now a quick look at the headlines once again. Quantum jump in drone industry shows emerging opportunities for employment in India, says Prime Minister Narendra Modi at India's biggest drone festival, Bharat Drone Mahotsav 2022 in New Delhi. Drone technology ensures last mile delivery across the nation, says Prime Minister. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says Biden administration is not seeking a cold war with China, but wants Beijing to adhere to international rules. Ukraine needs to face reality and talk to Russian leader Putin, says Ukrainian President Zelensky. Countries should take quick steps to contain the spread of monkeypox and share data about their vaccine stockpiles, says World Health Organization, European Union, working on a common purchasing agreement for vaccines. Gitanjali Shri's novel, Tomb of Sand, wins International Booker Prize, becomes the first novel translated from Hindi to win the prestigious award. And India's documentary film festival, MIF 2022, to kick start on Sunday. And in Asia Cup Hockey, India to take on Japan in their first Super 4 stage match tomorrow at Jakarta in Indonesia. And now before we end, let us listen to Mahatma Gandhi's favorite bhajan, Vaishnava Jan by artist from Fiji. And 
And with that, we end this bulletin. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow with the next edition of World News. Thank you.